In the time it takes to run a marathon, your heart beats over 30,000 times, your muscles fire millions of times, and your mind, it runs its own race. Let's unveil these hidden marathons inside you. You've seen marathons, the sweat, the strain, the triumph, but that's just the surface. Today, we're going deeper into a world hidden within each stride, each breath. We're unraveling the mysteries inside your body during this epic race, revealing what really happens and why it matters to every runner. The starting line of a marathon. Surrounded by a sea of runners, each heartbeat is a drum roll to the impending physical symphony. But what's really fascinating is what's happening inside your body at this very moment. First, there's anticipation, and with it, a cocktail of hormones. Adrenaline or epinephrine surges. This isn't just a feeling, it's a powerful chemical reaction. Your adrenal glands, perched atop your kidneys, spring into action. Adrenaline courses through your veins, signaling your heart to beat faster, pumping more blood to your muscles. Your breath quickens, maximizing oxygen intake. It's your body's natural turbo boost, priming you for the intense physical activity ahead. But there's more than adrenaline at play. Your body is also managing a delicate balance of hydration and electrolytes. You might have heard of carb loading, right? It's not just about energy. It's about optimizing your body's water levels. Glycogen, stored carbohydrates in your muscles, holds water. So when you carb load, you're not just fueling up. You're also hydrating your muscles in a way that water alone can't. And then there's the mental game. The starting line is a battleground of psychological preparedness. Anxiety and excitement blend in an intricate dance. For seasoned runners, rituals and routines help focus the mind, transforming nervous energy into determined resolve. So as you stand there, waiting for the starting gunshot, your body isn't just standing, it's preparing, it's transforming. You are, at that moment, a perfect embodiment of anticipation and preparation, a microcosm of physiological and psychological readiness. As the race begins, your first strides mark the start of a remarkable physiological journey. Let's explore what happens in those first miles, when your body shifts from a state of anticipation to one of action. In these initial stages, your body predominantly uses aerobic respiration. This means your muscles are fueled by oxygen. Every deep breath you take is not just a gulp of air. It's a vital part of a complex energy-producing process. Oxygen travels from your lungs to your muscles through a vast network of blood vessels powering each step. But the real star of the show is glycogen. Stored in your muscles and liver, glycogen is your body's preferred source of energy during these early miles. Think of it as your body's own high-octane fuel. As you run, enzymes break down glycogen into glucose, which is then used to produce ATP, the energy currency of your cells. This process is beautifully efficient, keeping you moving without fatigue. Yet it's not just about the energy. Your muscles are now in a state of controlled contraction and relaxation, a rhythmic dance perfected by training and natural adaptation. The fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers work in harmony. Slow twitch fibers, endurance stars, are the primary players here, maintaining your pace and conserving energy. Simultaneously, your heart is an unspoken hero, beating faster and stronger. Each beat sends a wave of blood, rich in oxygen and nutrients, to your hard-working muscles. It's a testament to the heart's incredible ability to adapt and support sustained physical activity. And let's not forget the role of your nervous system. It's constantly sending and receiving signals, coordinating movements and keeping balance. Your brain is actively engaged, calculating distances, pacing, and making split-second decisions. Now, as you reach the mid-marathon point, your body begins a fascinating transformation. This is where endurance meets adaptation, where the true marathon mystery unfolds. Your glycogen stores start depleting. This is crucial. As glycogen levels drop, your body begins to look for alternative energy sources. It's a seamless transition, almost like switching gears. Fat, previously a silent spectator, now steps onto the stage. This shift to fat as a primary energy source is a survival mechanism honed by millennia of evolution. Fat breakdown releases fatty acids, which are then converted into usable energy. However, this process is less efficient than glycogen breakdown, and your pace might slow as a result. But the changes don't stop there. Your body temperature has been steadily rising. Sweating, nature's cooling system, kicks into overdrive. 
It's not just about shedding excess heat. It's a delicate balancing act. Sweat evaporates, cooling your skin while your blood vessels expand. A process called vasodilation, bringing more blood to the skin's surface. But there's a trade-off. This redirects blood away from your muscles, challenging your body to maintain both cooling and energy supply. Your breathing also deepens. You're now consuming more oxygen than at the start. Your lungs work tirelessly, ensuring a steady oxygen supply as your muscles demand more. The infamous runner's high is not a myth. As your body endures the stress and strain, endorphins are released. These natural painkillers help mask discomfort and can induce a sense of euphoria. Now let's talk about the mind. Mental fatigue starts setting in. Concentration and determination are vital. The marathon is as much a mental challenge as it is physical. The body's adaptations are not just about enduring. They're about overcoming, overcoming pain, fatigue, and mental barriers. As you enter the final stretch of the marathon, your body and mind are pushing against their limits. This is where the extraordinary happens. It's a testament to human resilience, a moment where incredible physiological and psychological feats unfold. First, let's talk about your muscles. They've been working tirelessly, contracting and relaxing thousands of times. Now they're experiencing a buildup of lactic acid. This is often blamed for muscle soreness, but it's actually more of a fuel in these late stages, converted back into energy. However, the real challenge here is muscle fatigue. Your muscle fibers have been gradually depleted and now every step requires a monumental effort. But the marathoner's body is a marvel of adaptation. Your liver plays a critical role now, releasing its stored glucose to help replenish your diminishing energy reserves. This is your body's last reserve, a final push to get you through the finish line. Your heart too is a champion, maintaining an increased rate to supply oxygen to your fatigued muscles. The sustained elevated heart rate is a balancing act, ensuring blood flow while avoiding overexertion. Let's not overlook hydration and electrolyte balance. Dehydration and electrolyte imbalances can lead to cramping and decreased muscle function. This late in the race, maintaining this balance becomes crucial. And in your brain, something remarkable is happening. Despite exhaustion, your brain triggers the release of more endorphins, helping to manage pain and fatigue. There's also a surge in dopamine, the reward neurotransmitter, giving you a sense of urgency and focus to reach that finish line. Finally, as you approach the end, it's not just about physical endurance, it's a mental battle. The resilience of the human spirit comes to the fore. Determination, grit, and the sheer will to finish become just as vital as any muscle in your body. And there it is, the finish line. As you cross it, your body doesn't immediately realize that the marathon is over. The aftermath is a fascinating blend of physiological responses and recovery processes. Initially, there's a sense of overwhelming relief. Your muscles, finally allowed to relax, might feel wobbly or extremely fatigued. This is your body transitioning from an intense state of exertion to rest. Muscle fibers, which have undergone microscopic tears and strains, now begin the healing process. This might lead to delayed onset muscle soreness, commonly known as DOMS, peaking around 24 to 48 hours later. Your heart rate gradually slows down, but it doesn't immediately return to its resting state. It's a gradual decrease as your cardiovascular system shifts from its high-energy marathon mode to a more restful pace. Your body temperature also begins to normalize. Sweating decreases and the blood vessels on your skin's surface constrict to their normal state, a process known as vasoconstriction. Hydration and electrolyte balance are still crucial at this stage. Rehydration is key, ideally with fluids containing electrolytes to replenish what was lost during the race. This helps prevent cramping and facilitates better recovery. Nutrition, too, plays a significant role in post-marathon recovery. Consuming carbohydrates and proteins soon after finishing can help replenish glycogen stores and aid in muscle repair. Then there's the immune system. It's not uncommon for marathon runners to experience a temporary dip in immune function post-race, making them more susceptible to minor illnesses like colds. This is your body's way of saying, I need rest now. In conclusion, the marathon journey is a remarkable narrative of human endurance, not just on the track, but within the myriad pathways of our bodies. Have you run a marathon? What was your experience like? Share your stories, challenges, and tips in the comments below. Your journey could inspire and guide others.